Hello, welcome to this uh, nephrology update. I am Dr. Mohamed Tinawi. I'm a nephrologist in Northwest Indiana. In this update, I am representing myself, not the American Society of Nephrology. I'm going to uh, review late breaking clinical trials and some of the most important posters and studies from Kidney Week 2022 in Orlando, Florida. Let's get started. The first study I'm going to review is the empagliflozin in patients with chronic kidney disease. It was published simultaneously at the New England Journal of Medicine. It's the EMPA kidney study. In this study, we have about uh, 6,600 patients with advanced chronic kidney disease, GFR 20 to 45, with or without proteinuria. Those with estimated GFR 45 to 90 had at least 200 milligrams of albumin per gram creatinine. Patients were either given placebo or, or empagliflozin, 10 milligrams daily, and it was very effective. So the risk of progression of chronic kidney disease or death from cardiovascular causes was lower by 28% in the empagliflozin compared to placebo, while hospitalizations were lower by 14%. The second study I'm going to review is Dapagliflozin effect on hospital admission in patients with CKD. So you are all aware now uh, of the DAPA CKD trial. This is a post hoc analysis, so after the trial was published. And actually Dapagliflozin, like we have just seen with Empagliflozin, lowered hospitalizations compared to uh, placebo by 16%. So uh, almost similar to uh, empagliflozin. Next study, we are going to uh, review impact of race, ethnicity, and age on hospitalization outcome in advanced chronic kidney disease patients treated with conservative management versus dialysis. So here we have a review of over 300,000 patients with advanced chronic kidney disease over a 13-year period. We have either patients who received conservative management, meaning they did not receive dialysis for two years, or they received dialysis. Now, hospitalization actually was higher in those who received dialysis, including hospitalization for congestive heart failure, also hospitalization for respiratory causes, hypertension, and end-stage renal disease. So this is yet another study showing that preemptive or early start of dialysis in patients with advanced chronic kidney disease is not helpful. Next, we are going to review the STOP ACE trial, renin angiotensin system inhibition in advanced chronic kidney disease. Many physicians got into the habit of stopping renin angiotensin system inhibitors in patients with high creatinine. Some stop them automatically when creatinine hits three or some arbitrary uh, threshold. Does that help? Does that lead to improvement in estimated GFR? So this was a multi-center open-label trial, 441 patients for three years. Patients had stages four and five chronic kidney disease. Now, discontinuation of RAS inhibition was not associated with any difference between the groups in terms of decrease of estimated GFR. There was no difference in initiation of dialysis, incidence of end-stage kidney disease, and there was no difference of death or difference in adverse events. Therefore, uh, unless you have a real reason to stop these RAS inhibitors, you should not. Next, we are going to discuss the exploratory results from a phase two study of semdesiran in patients with IgA nephropathy. This semdesiran is a subcutaneous RNA. It suppresses complement five production, okay? So here we have a phase two study, 32 weeks, 31 patients with IgA nephropathy, proteinuria over one gram, and they received this semdesiran, 600 milligrams every four weeks versus placebo, and it was helpful at 32 weeks. There was a 46% reduction in uh, proteinuria. GFR stabilized while it declined in the placebo group by uh, six ml per minute. So it's an interesting concept, which is, complement suppression in patients with IgA nephropathy. 
Next, I'm going to present the MyTemp trial. Uh, this study was done in 84 dialysis clinics in Ontario, 15,000 patients, 4.3 million hemodialysis sessions over four years. So they either set the dialysate temperature at 36.5, which is the standard, or they set it 0.5 to 0.9 lower than the patient's temperature pre-dialysis, but not, no lower than 35.5. Now, setting dialysis temperature lower did not help with anything. Hypotension was not lower. Cardiovascular death was not lower. CVA or cardiac events were not lower. Only patients felt more uncomfortable, felt cold. So there's really no good reason to do it. Next, we have the best fluids trial from New Zealand and Australia. This study was conducted at 16 hospitals in 807 transplant patients. What did they do? Well, they randomized patients to either receive Plasma Light 148, which is a balanced crystalloid solution, or saline during surgery and up to 48 hours post-transplant until fluids were stopped. This was a positive trial. Uh, recently, we had some uh, negative trials showing no difference between plasma light and saline. Here, plasma light 148 showed significantly lower incidence of delayed graft function compared with saline. Okay, risk reduction was 26%. There was no difference in graft function or acute rejection at 52 weeks. So again, only delayed graft function was better. There was no difference in serious adverse events. Now, I have to say plasma light is not that much more expensive than saline and could uh, be used more often. Last, I'm going to present the results of the Aurora 2 study. This is a continuation of the Aurora 1 study. Voclosporin was added to MMF and low-dose steroids in patients with severe lupus nephritis. Severe lupus nephritis were patients with class 3 or 4 or class 4 plus 5 plus active lesions and proteinuria, and we had more, we had higher complete renal response in patients on voclosporin at 52 weeks. The problem with voclosporin remains availability, remains price. I'm going to end here. Uh, I hope that that was uh, helpful. Uh, see you next time.